In today's video, join me as we get cozy and practice drawing 10 different types of mushrooms. Hello to all you lovely and wonderful people. My name is Lynette. Welcome to all of you who are new to my channel and to all of you amazing subscribers, welcome back. It's a cold and miserable day here on the Isle of Wight, so today I wanted to get all cozy and draw some mushrooms to cheer me up. So I begin drawing my mushrooms in pencil first, just rough little sketches so I can work out the placement of everything. And that way before I commit pen to paper, um, I can make sure that my designs are spread out evenly over the page and I'm happy with the overall look. The paper that I'm drawing on today is 300 GSM cold pressed watercolour paper. You don't necessarily have to draw these on watercolour paper, I just thought it might be a good idea in case I wanted to add some colour to my mushrooms once I've finished drawing them out. However, you'll see at the end of the video that I didn't end up doing that and I liked them as they were. For my first mushroom, I thought I'd try one of my favourite types of mushrooms to draw, which is your typical kind of red spotted toadstool. I've drawn these little guys lots of times before, so I thought I'd start off with something that I feel confident with the most. As you saw, I started off with the stalk first. When drawing the stalk out in pencil first, I just did an elongated rectangle. And then when I went over in pen, I made sure that I had all these sort of like jaggedy, fringy bits underneath the head of the toadstool and then towards the bottom. For the top of the mushroom, I drew a kind of squished rounded triangle shape, if that makes sense, um, making sure to add some little bumps along the outline when drawing it out in pen to create the appearance of like ray spots. And then to make those spots kind of pop off of the mushroom, um, I made thicker lines at the bottom to create shadows. And then with a 01 fine liner, I started adding these little lines underneath the head of the mushroom to create shadow where the light won't hit the stalk. Lightly moving the nib of the pen in little flicks away from where I want the shadow to be at its darkest. I then thought the stalk needed a little bit more texture, so I added a few more little lumps. And then some sketchy little contour lines to the bottom of the mushroom, which helps make the cap of the mushroom look a little less 2D. So next up, we're gonna draw a group of mushrooms kind of like the species of clustered bonnets. I am no mycologist by any means whatsoever, but luckily Google is my friend, and so the ones that I've illustrated, I've been able to possibly try and match the species against some illustrations I found online. Incidentally, going back to the red spotted mushrooms, I learned today that they're called fly agarics and not toadstools at all. So back to the clustered bonnets, these little guys have very thin stems and then quite wide flat but also slightly pointed caps. So after drawing the thin wavy stems, I added caps to the mushrooms that are very similar to the previous mushroom we just drew. However, for the gills of the mushroom, I did these sort of like jaggedy wavy lines. I'm not entirely sure that's an accurate representation of what clustered bonnet looks like, but I thought it's just a different way of portraying a mushroom and I liked how they look. For our third mushroom, I am doing a porcelain fungus. These have quite long thin stems and then quite a flat elongated cap with a slight round top. One thing I love about drawing mushrooms is that they don't require you to create perfectly straight lines and in fact they look more natural looking if they're slightly wobbly and imperfect. Once again for the gills of the mushroom it's just jaggedy lines that sort of spray out from the main stalk. This time round I'm drawing a slightly smaller version of this mushroom in front of the taller one just to mix things up a little bit and so that it doesn't look all samey with the overall design. And then I'm using the same shading techniques that I used before on my other mushrooms but also adding some more sketchy little lines to the smaller mushroom as it's sort of sat underneath the other cap it will be in shadow of that mushroom. For the first three mushrooms I have chosen some fairly generic mushroom shapes to create. As a little warm up for some more interesting and oddly shaped mushrooms to come up further in the video. Now I've added the shading to the base of the cap. I go over some of the initial outlines to darken them up and make them stand out a little bit. And then I slowly start adding some very faint lines for the gills of the mushroom. Trying to make sure that I get the curvatures of these lines bright. Especially from the perspective of which we're looking at the bottom of the cap. And once I was happy with how the gills were looking, I could go to town with building up those lines to create the shading and texture of the underside of the mushroom. And then once again, I go over any outlines where I think they need to be a little bit thicker with a 02 black fine liner. For the finer lines, I'm using a 01, which I think I have forgotten to mention in this video already, so I do apologize for that. 
And if you're interested, the brand of fine liners that I'm using in today's video are Unipin's Fine Line. So next up, we're going to use the same shape that we've been working with so far, but mix it up a little bit and change the texture of the mushroom. So this species of mushroom is commonly known as a decorated foliota. It is distinguished by its fruit body, which is covered with brown pointed sort of curved scales on the cap and the stem, and it has white gills. So as you can see, when I'm drawing the stem, I'm not making like smooth lines. I'm making sure they're kind of a little bit rigid. And then the same for the bottom of the cap of the mushroom, I'm sort of creating like these toothed uh, serrated lines. As I've already said in this video, I am no mushroom expert, but um, these are just my own interpretation of the species of mushrooms that I thought would be interesting to create. So if you're watching this video and you know your facts about fungi, then I do apologize. So as you can see, I'm adding these little jaggedy wavy lines to the stem, and I will also be adding them to the cap of the mushroom. And then start adding some linear shading to the stem, and then building up a little bit of more um, darkness on the bottom of the cap. For the dome of the cap, I just do exactly the same sort of jaggedy lines that I did for the bottom and just do it in a more curved kind of triangular fashion. Once we've got the outline down, then I'm just adding more spiky, jaggedy little lines to the top of the cap to make it look all spiky and scaly. And also giving a bit of a frill to the bottom just to give a bit more texture with some more spiky wavy lines. Next up, we're creating a white button mushroom. As I'm sure you're very aware, these guys have a very round bulbous cap and then a short stubby stem. I think out of all the mushrooms, this one is the most easiest to draw. It's basically a squished circle for the cap and then a chunky sort of stocky stem. If you want to keep it really simple, you could do like a closed cap mushroom and not bother with adding the gills on the bottom and then maybe just add a little bit of a ring at the very top of the stalk where it meets the cap. And that's pretty much it for a button mushroom. Um, all I'm doing now is adding a few little lines for texture and make it look a little bit more interesting and a little bit of shading to the left hand side of the mushroom. Next up, we're gonna do one of the weird shaped mushrooms and this one is a false chanterelle. So these guys are originally convex in shape, but as they mature, they sort of become more funnel shaped. The cap margin, which remains rolled in a little bit, becomes wavy or lobed in age. So I'm starting off with quite a chunky stem and then it sort of fans out into a, like a Y shape. And I kind of don't want to admit this in the video, but the cap kind of looks slightly phallic shape when I'm drawing it. But there you go. Hopefully I won't get in trouble with YouTube for mentioning this. But anywho, underneath the initial outline of the top of the cap, I then add another sort of like wobbly line to create the illusion that it's folding over. And then I start adding the gills. Once again, just very faint lines sort of working their way from the stem to the top in a fanned out fashion and then adding more and more lines around the top of the cap on the underside of the bit where it's folding over to create shadow. Next up, I'm drawing a morel mushroom. Now these guys are pretty fun to draw because there's so much more detail to them than what we've done so far. These distinctive fungi have a honeycomb appearance due to the network of ridges with the pits composing their caps. They have quite a chunky stocky stem and quite a high domed cap. When I drew the outline of the cap, I made sure to draw sort of like really wobbly, wibbly lines to give it the texture that morels have. And then I fill in the outline of the cap of the mushroom with almost like this giraffe skin pattern. So lots of irregular shaped wibbly circles and squares um, which don't touch each other, making sure there's lots of negative space in between those shapes. And then adding lots of light sketchy line work to create shading and texture. And to make sure that I build up lots of those lines underneath the cap of the mushroom, because the cap would cast quite a lot of shadow on the stalk. And then once I decide enough is enough, 
I start filling in all of these irregular wiggly circles that are on the cap of the mushroom in. You may notice that in each of the sections I leave a little bit of negative space and that's to create a little bit of highlight to the pits in the caps. I think out of all of the mushrooms that I've drawn in today's video this one ended up being my favourite. I don't know what it is about mushrooms but I just think that they're so pretty to look at, really fun to draw and as long as they're edible really tasty too. And they come in so many different varieties of shapes and colours that it was quite hard to narrow down only drawing 10 for this particular video so don't be surprised if I end up doing some more mushroom videos in the future if you guys like them. Let me know if you'd like to see more, drop a comment in the comment section below. Um, I think it would be really nice to do some watercolour mushrooms as well, but yeah, let me know what you think. Once I've finished colouring in all of those spaces, I go in with my 01 fineliner and just add a little bit of texture in between those black spots with a few sketchy lines. This is another really interesting shaped mushroom, it's the rosy vein cap or the wrinkled peach. Unlike most of the mushrooms that we've drawn for so far, uh, the stem of the mushroom is without a ring. Droplets form on the stem of these mushrooms, so when I drew the outline of the stem, I made sure to leave bumps so that I could depict these droplets forming from the stem of the mushroom. To make the droplets pop, I add a little bit of shading to each circle. The surface of the wrinkled peach is, you've guessed it, very wrinkly and rippled. So there were no straight lines drawn when I did the outline of the cap of this mushroom and I made sure they were very wriggled and wrinkly. And then to create the texture of the surface of the cap, I just filled everything in with lots of wiggly lines following the shape of the outline of the mushroom. And then creating lots of curved lines fanning out from the stem. Apologies, my camera lens does go out of focus just for a couple of seconds. I do apologise, but by the next mushroom it disappears and it's all clear again, so sorry about that. Technology is a wonderful thing as long as it does as it's told. For our ninth illustration, we are going to do a simplified oyster mushroom. So these guys have a broad fan or an oyster shaped cap. I've given it a very short stubby stem and kind of a curved but yet flat concave top. Again, the wonderful thing about drawing natural things is it doesn't have to be perfect. That's pretty much it for the top of the mushroom, but um, I add some gills following the curvature of the mushroom and then with a slightly thicker fine liner, I go over some of the outlines that I've drawn where I'd like them to be a little bit thicker. And once again, then finish it off with a little bit of line work for some shading. For a tenth illustration, I thought I would do some Liberty Cat mushrooms. The space that I had in the bottom right hand of this page begged to have like a group of mushrooms together. Some images of these mushrooms, the stems are quite straight, but then in a lot of them, they're quite wavy and curved. These mushrooms have a distinctive conical bell-shaped cap. I just think I might need to iterate that if you find any of these in the world, do not eat them. The gills to these mushrooms are sort of hidden underneath at the underside of the mushroom's cap. So when drawing them out, I only made a small reference to them. I then add some texture to the stems of the mushroom. And then just to be a little bit different, I decided to shade in these, the caps of these mushrooms with a little bit of dot work. So I have the dots very close together where I want it to be darkest and then more spread out where I want it to look lighter. Once I finish building up the dots, especially on the underside of the cap of the mushroom, I add some sparkles around all of the mushrooms all over the page and that's it i hope you enjoyed the video as much as i did creating these illustrations if you'd like to support the channel then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when i post future content and please give it a thumbs up and a comment because all your interactions do help the video get pushed by youtube's algorithms thank you so much for watching and goodbye.